Welcome to the Ben Wood Johnson Podcast. You can visit Dr. Johnson's blog at benwoodpost.com. Dr. Johnson's works can be found at drbenwoodjohnson.com. You can also support Dr. Johnson on Patreon, the link to which is in the description. Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, welcome back to the Benwood Johnson podcast. Welcome back uh, for another episode. Welcome back for another season. Today is June the 7th, 2021. This is podcast number 67. Uh, again, this is a new season. We are going to talk about crime. Now, crime in society is, uh, is, a, is a scourge, some might say. Um, people are criminal. People do bad things. People deserve to be locked up. And uh, th- that's the way we understand crime. And there's also this idea that when people do commit crime, it is because they made a choice. It's a deliberate choice to do this evil, so to speak. So in this podcast, we're going to sort of debunk the notion of choice. Hence, the name of the podcast, The Flaw in the Logic of Choice. So what that means is that we're going to sort of undermine this understanding because it is erroneous. And it is also a mistaken belief, which is the underpinning of criminal law or crime and punishment. Uh, this is going to be the foundation of this of this season because this season is going to focus on the concept of crime in society. We're going to discuss the ramifications of crime and how crime is understood or how crime is misunderstood. Without further ado, let us delve right into it. There's a flaw in the logic of choice. It's always fascinating to hear people talk about, you know, choice. The idea that you have choices you make choices and when you ask them you know when you ask them a simple question no when when do we start making choices do we do we do is is there a point where we begin making choices is there a point where we don't know what choices are Is, is there a point where choices are made for us we have to go back to this idea If if there's a point where choices are made for us, then what are the consequences of those choices? And if choices have been made for us, at which point do we own those choices? At which point when they become our choices? For example, if I were born in, uh, in Haiti, was that a choice I made? But suppose that this wasn't my choice. And and suppose that this was my parents' choice, right? At which point does it become my choice? At which point do I own being a Haitian? At which point do I own being who I am, who I was born into? And when I when I start acting according to that that thing that I have become, that thing that I am, at which point do I own those actions? So the whole logic in the the idea of choice is flawed because the individual could not have made choices if the individual did not make any choice. If the individual did not, at the inception, decide who he or she would become, where she would be, who she would, would be. So those are not choices. At least those are not choices made by the individual. Okay, Those are conjectures. The individual finds himself in a conjecture. He finds himself in a state of fact. And he has to adapt, adjust to this reality. And everything he does or doesn't do is incumbent upon that reality, which has already been determined. Now, of course, some people are like, well, this is a deterministic argument. But again, we have to go back to what does that mean? 
when you say deterministic argument what does that mean because uh, some of the things we have to understand about this idea of deterministic argument is that there are certain things that have already been predisposed predetermined preordained that is not what we're talking about here we're not talking about things that are already predisposed we're not talking about a future that has already been laid out where all you have to do is follow this future yeah in that sense we're not talking about choice we're talking about certain things that have already been decided we're not talking about this we're talking about the reality which is not necessarily preordained nevertheless what happens in that reality is already pre there, there, there are certain conditions there are certain precursors that made it possible for these things to happen but the individual in the process has no choice but to follow those precursors because some choices have already been made ahead of time and whatever the individual does in the process is not going to be determined or based on what he or she wants to do is going to be determined based on what he or she was made to be thereby what he is is not based on what he wanted to be it is based on what has already been determined as to who or what he would be and everything he does is going to be based on that the guy stole a watch he was sent to prison for 17 years According to this uh, show I was watching, and Batman said to the guy, I believe in choice. You made a choice and you have to pay for it for the rest of your life. But the question is, which choice Batman is referring to? Is it the choice where the guy stole the watch? Or is it the choice where he was he found himself in a situation where he needs to steal a watch? Which because those are choices as well. Because before he stole the watch, he made choices that put him in a situation where stealing a watch was the only thing to do. Okay? So which choice is Batman talking about? The choice that was made after the choice that was made before he found himself in a position to make that choice? Or is it the choice where everything before that is irrelevant? Rather, it's everything from this point forward that's relevant. And if that's the case, then he did make a choice. Because choice is not a single event. Choice is a continuity of events. Choice is part of a string of events. You don't start making choices at a particular point. Choices are incumbent upon other choices. There are ramifications. Remember Batman says, you have to pay for it for the rest of your life. Therefore, your whole life is a choice. Since the day you were in your inception, it's a, there's a choice that was made that was going to de- that is going to determine everything else in your life. Now, it is the, again, again, this is not a deterministic argument. You're not predetermined. You're not preordained. What happened is that your future or what you're gonna do is going to be based on that reality. Okay. Now we don't know what those choices are going to be. There are several options, there are several possibilities, but all of which are, are already determined, or at least are already, the, the, those options are there. I could choose to fly one day. That choice has not been made for me, however, it has been made for a bird somewhere. The bird cannot choose not to fly. It, it's not an, a choice that the bird has. Same way I cannot choose to fly. It is not an option that I have. I can choose to be whatever I can be. Thereby, my choices are based on my reality. It is based on, or at least they are based on on, on my fact, my state of fact, my situation at at a given time. So when people are talking about choices, we have to ask them that question. When does a choice begin and when does it end? What consequences do choices have and at which point the, the, the person who makes the choices own those choices and is it ever the case that one choice is related to millions thousands of tri- thousands of billion trillions of other choices okay these are some of the questions you have to be asking <laughs>